How good are Gibson and telescopes really? In this video, I will dive into the history, design and features of Dobsonian telescopes and discuss their advantages and disadvantages. I'm also going to tell you why, in my opinion, it's the perfect telescope for visual observations for the average hobby astronomer. So this is going to be interesting. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to BD Observatory. A Dobsonian telescope is a type of reflecting telescope that uses a Newtonian reflector optical tube in combination with a simple alt azimuth mount base. The reflector was invented by Isaac Newton in the 17th century as an alternative to the refracting telescope, which at the time was a design that suffered from severe chromatic aberrations. Even though reflecting telescopes produce other types of optical aberrations like coma, field curvature or astigmatism, it is a design that allows for telescopes with a very large aperture, which is a major advantage over other telescope designs. Almost all of the major telescopes used in astronomy research today are reflectors. The most common reflector telescope design is the Newtonian telescope and its subcategory, the Dobsonian telescope. The DAB was designed by John Dobson in the 1960s and quickly became the most popular reflecting telescope sold on the market. A Newtonian reflector and therefore a Dobsonian telescope works by gathering the light that enters the telescope, which first gets reflected by the primary parabolic mirror sitting at the other end of the optical tube. From there the light gets reflected back towards the secondary mirror that is located near the front of the optical tube and is much smaller than the primary mirror. Because the secondary mirror is tilted to 45 degrees, the light gets reflected towards an opening on the side of the optical tube. This is where the focuser lies. From there, the used eyepiece or accessory takes over and modifies the light. So basically, a Dobsonian telescope is a mostly empty optical tube with two mirrors inside. And this brings us to the first two major advantages this type of telescopes have to offer, scalability and manufacturing costs. This means that manufacturers are capable of producing telescopes with very large apertures at much lower prices compared to other telescope designs. Aperture sizes of 8, 10, 12 or 16 inches aren't that uncommon and can be purchased at relatively low prices. For example, where an 8 inch refractor telescope will set you back almost 10 grand, a similar size daub will only cost you around $700, which is still a lot of money, but you get my point. Another advantage of the Psyonan telescopes is that because of the large aperture, the light gathering capacity is of course exceptionally good. There is a good reason why dobs are also called light buckets. Because of this, they are capable of revealing faint details that no other telescope design can, especially not for the same price, making them the perfect instrument for observing deep sky objects. Their large aperture compared to a relatively short focal length results in a fast telescope design which offers a very wide field of view, which is another great feature for observing DSOs. This is not to say that DOBs aren't good for planetary observations. On the contrary, thanks to the wide aperture, the high resolution provided is excellent for revealing a lot of details. The simple design of a Dobsonian telescope also makes it very easy to use and to modify. There is a whole list of mods for Dobsonian telescopes out there, starting with collimation knobs for the two mirrors, to flocking the optical tube and special computerized equatorial platforms for the mount. Dobsonian telescopes can also get away without any optical tube whatsoever. 
and rely only on a clever truss design that gives the whole construction rigidity while saving weight in the process, making them even more easy to transport around. Since a Dobsonian telescope only uses mirrors to focus the light, it doesn't produce chromatic aberrations, which is definitely a positive point. This being the Achilles heel of refracting telescopes, for example. Any chromatic aberrations that might be visible through a reflector telescope comes from the eyepiece's lenses and not the telescope itself. While the Dobsonian telescopes offer many advantages, there are also some drawbacks to consider. Let's start with the limited tracking capabilities. While an alt azimuth mount might be perfectly fine for visual observations with manual tracking, it isn't really suited for anything more demanding than this, such as astrophotography, for example. This is because to follow an object in the sky, the telescope needs to move on both X and Y axis, which might be acceptable for short exposures, but becomes too imprecise for prolonged tracking sessions. Also, since an alt azimuth mount doesn't follow Earth's rotation, an object will slowly rotate in the field of view if the tracking is done over a longer period of time. At this point, it's fair to mention that this limited tracking is not specific to the Obsidian telescopes, but to all telescopes that are mounted on AZ mounts. Another disadvantage of the Obsidian telescopes is the need for collimation. This is the process of aligning both mirrors in relation to each other and the optical tube. Here dabs require regular collimation, which can be a time-consuming and difficult process for some users. It also requires special tools like collimation lasers or Cheshire eyepieces to get this done right. Depending on the telescope, collimation is something you might need to do before every observing session, depending on how well your specific telescope can hold collimation. My 12 inch DAB, for example, needs collimation every two to three observing sessions. As mentioned earlier, while Dobsonian telescopes are spared from chromatic aberrations, their mirrors are unfortunately susceptible to other types of optical aberrations, like coma, field curvature or astigmatism. This is why shopping for telescopes with quality mirrors is that more important. There are also different accessories like field flatteners or comma correctors that help mitigate these shortcomings. They aren't included with a telescope and need to be purchased separately, which will only drive the costs up. So this is also something you need to consider. Diffraction can also be a problem for the Dobsonian telescopes. This refers to the bending and spreading of light waves as they pass around the edge of an object, such as the edge of the secondary mirror in front of the optical tube. Diffraction causes a reduction in the overall contrast and resolution of the image, making it difficult to see very fine details in the object uh, you are observing. In general, diffraction is more pronounced at high magnifications and becomes more noticeable as the size of the aperture of the telescope decreases. So, we have established that the aperture size of the Obsidian telescopes can be quite large. The focal length, however, is limited by practicality more so than the size of the primary mirror, because you can make the optical tube or the distance between the two mirrors only so big before it gets too long. So this leads to shorter focal length designs, the larger the aperture becomes, resulting in smaller F ratios, this being the focal length divided by the aperture. This is what we call fast telescopes and this isn't always a good thing since most eyepieces will struggle to offer an aberration free image in telescopes with an F ratio of F4 or lower. All right, now that we have looked at both the advantages and disadvantages of Dobson and telescopes, let's see in which situations you should consider getting such a telescope. If you are looking from an experience point of view, 
then a DAB will be a great instrument for observing the night sky no matter how experienced you are. For example, if you are just starting out, then a 6 and or an 8 inch DAB is going to be just right in order to help you learn your way around the night sky. Both sizes are great for planetary and DSO observations. The intuitive and azimuth movements are easily learned. Collimating is also something that seems difficult in the beginning, but after you have done it a couple of times, it gets much easier really fast. If you are more experienced, then it's as simple as getting a bigger dub that will allow you to observe finer details on familiar objects or new fainter objects in the night sky. In this case, maybe consider getting one that is based on a truss design and maybe with a higher quality mirror. The rigidity of the whole construction might suffer a bit and you will need to collimate it more often compared to a solid uh, tube construction, but these are small trade-offs compared to what you gain in return. Even if you look at it from a transportation point of view, a dub can be easy to transport around. I know, they are mostly known to be very bulky and heavy, but this isn't always the case. A dub with a clever truss construction like the ultralight Gen 2 dub series from Explore Scientific, for example, will fold down in such a way that the end result is no bigger than a laundry basket albeit a very heavy laundry basket. My first telescope was an 8 inch solid tube dub from Skywatcher and I loved it. Not too big, decent aperture and good optics. It was lacking a bit in the feature accessories department, but it more than made up for it with an affordable price tag. The collapsible tube series also from Skywatcher, I think it's called Flex Tube is definitely worth considering as well, as it will combine good optics with a lighter, less bulky construction. If you can get your hands on Omegon telescopes, then I can totally recommend the Pro Dub series. I own the 12 inch version, which surprised me with very good optics and some great accessories included in the box. If you are looking for a lightweight, open design, then definitely check out the Ultra Light Gen 2 series I mentioned earlier from Explore Scientific. In my opinion, these are some of the best dubs you can get right now. So, while dubs aren't perfect in a general sense, no telescope really is, they are, however, in my opinion, as close as you can get to a perfect telescope. They have a wide aperture that collects a lot of light information. This is a requirement for DSO observations. The focal length is long enough to allow for very high magnifications. This is important for planetary observations. It's relatively easy to use and to maintain. It can be modded in a number of different ways. And on top of all this, it's also very affordable when compared to other telescopes with similar aperture sizes. Alright, that's been it. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave. This helps the channel out a lot. Thank you for watching and catch you guys in the next video.